If you've got a hacked Xbox 360, there's a great new homebrew store that allows you to easily find and install a whole range of homebrew apps and hopefully a whole lot more. So let's have a look at the brand new homebrew store. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. I've been having quite a look at the Xbox 360 over the past number of videos and we've gone through and we've hacked this um, with an RGH3 mod. And again, if, if you haven't um, done that yet to your Xbox 360, it is really worth doing. Um, so please have a look at my video on that. And again, I'll put a link to that down in the description. But one great new feature for your hacked Xbox that's just been released over the last couple of weeks, uh, and this is August 2024, um, is that it now has its own homebrew app store. And what that means is that instead of having to go through a number of websites, finding homebrew apps, installing them manually, copying files and so on, you can now really just have an app which you can open, you can browse through, just simply select the apps you want to install, emulators and so on, and then just install them with a simple click of a mouse button. So this homebrew store is, is quite new, it's still in development and we're still getting a number of apps being added to that. But hopefully then um, this will continue to grow and the application developers have built it in a way that allows people to create their own software repositories. So really um, it opens up the um, possibilities then of having much more than just homebrew apps being available directly for you to download. This could be sort of resources, um, various um, applications, and of course, potentially some games. Again, if some licensing deals and agreements can be reached for those. So in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to install that, get it set up, and then we'll have a look at what's actually inside there. So before we get started, there are of course a couple of prerequisites uh, for your Xbox. So again, you do need to have a, a modified um, Xbox 360 and it does need to be running the Aurora desktop. So this application is specifically for the Aurora desktop. Um, if you haven't got that installed, you can install that as an app on your system and then run it through there. Um, but of course, um, it's not going to work in any other of the dashboards that you may have installed. So once you've got that all set up, um, you're ready then to start installing the system. So jumping on to our console then, if you've got your Xbox 360 connected to Wi-Fi, installing the Homebrew Store is incredibly easy. If you don't have a Wi-Fi connection, we can do it by installing some files, but we'll have a look at that um, after I've done it this way here. So in the main Aurora menu, if you press the back button, that will take you into the system menu. And there we want to come down using our D-pad till we find the scripts option. Now from there we go to the Aurora repo browser. And inside that we need to go then to utility scripts. And this is where um, we will find the link then to download and install the homebrew store. So if you click on that, that will then download that and ask you if you want to install that. Of course we want to say yes to that. And that now is our homebrew store installed. Now we don't actually launch it from here. So if I come back out until we get back to the main menu. So if we want to actually open the homebrew store from our main menu, again, we need to go into our system menu with the back button, into our scripts option. And inside there, you will now see we have a listing for the homebrew store. So if I click on that with the A button, we're now running the homebrew store. Now, if you haven't got a Wi-Fi connection on your Xbox, then we can still install the app, um, but we're going to have to copy across the files manually. So if you head across to this web address, and again, I'll put that link in the description down below, this will take you to the homebrew store page on the console mods website. So if you look through here, you'll see some instructions on how to install it. And we have a link then off here to go and get hold of the actual installation files. So there is a download link here, so that comes down as a zip file. So I'm simply going to save that onto my computer. And then once that's downloaded, if I go to that file location, I can then extract that um, archive into its own folder. So I'm just going to extract it here into its own folder. 
So once that's extracted, I'm just going to rename that folder just a little bit better than it's listed there. So I'm just going to call it Homebrew Store. And now we need to transfer these files onto our Xbox. So I've got a USB drive here that I formatted as an FAT32 drive. So I'm simply going to copy that folder and drop it onto my USB drive. So once that's complete, I need to then take that USB drive and plug it into my Xbox. So in our Aurora main menu, if we go to our system menu with the back button and then into our file manager, we should then find that our USB drive is sitting there. So if I select that, we should find our homebrew store folder that we just created sitting in there. So we want to copy that across. So if I highlight that, then move across to the left menu, and come down to the copy function and press A for that. So that is now queued for copy. We can now then navigate to where we need to put it. So on our main menu, we want to go into our Aurora folder. Then we want to go to our user and then our scripts and our utility scripts. And this is where we would actually then paste that homebrew store folder. Now, obviously, I've already installed this using the Wi-Fi connection, so my folder is already there. And that then, of course, if I go inside that, you will see that we have the files that are um, we, we've just downloaded in that menu and in, in that application folder. So that's how you would install it manually. Um, after that, then, of course, um, you would run it in exactly the same way as we've just run from our Wi-Fi connection. So if I come back out of here, let's go back out to our, our um, main menu, um, back into our system menu, going to scripts, and then going to our homebrew store. So we're now back in and running our homebrew store. So let's have a look at what's actually in there. So the homebrew store is really a list of software and various other resources that people have made available through this system. So what they're basically doing is they are creating repositories of software, which uh, they can then link into the Homebrew Store system. So once you connect to that repository, the Homebrew Store will list all of the applications and games and resources in this menu system and then allow you to browse that and then install them um, simply by selecting them and clicking on it. And that really removes the need for you to go to various websites, download installation files, copy them onto your Xbox and then install the applications that way. Now, at the moment, um, the Homebrew Store is growing. It's only been launched at the time of um, I'm making this. It's only been launched for a couple of weeks. So we're still waiting for a number of repositories to be, be created. And consolemods.org, of course, um, as they distribute this software, have um, started that process. So you can see at the moment that there are a few categories that they have created on their repository. So we have some homebrew apps, which are various sort of um, utility applications that you can use. And basically what, what you have in here is you have the actual applications listed. If you select it once, um, it will take you to a bit of information about that. So we have this fake anim here, which um, allows you to replace the boot animation um, on your Xbox. And again, you can see it's, it's giving you some instructions as to how to do that. Um, so I'm not going to install that one. Um, but again, if we come out of here, so we've got our, our homebrew apps. We have homebrew games. So these are um, written by various homebrew um, uh, application um, people. Uh, these are then available for free. And you'll see that there are various sort of games and various ports of other games. So we have one here, a, a port of Rick Dangerous. Um, if we do want to install that again, we can click on that to see what it is. So this information panel that pops up actually is quite important. So not only does it tell you about the, the application, but it also shows you something here called its path, and that's where it's actually going to install the application foot files. So remember in Aurora, we do need to tell Aurora where on our hard drive we want it to scan for various bits of software. So again, you can see that this application is going to be installed into a homebrew folder on my main hard drive. So I am, after I install this, I am going to have to make sure that that um, homebrew folder is part of my Aurora um, paths, which it will scan for applications. Otherwise, it's not going to show up in my um, main menu.
So let's just um, install that. So it's going to download the files, install them into that correct area. If we try and back out of the system, um, it is going to then come back to here where it's going to say that um, because we've installed some new software, it's going to have to restart our Aurora. So let's let it do that and then we'll fix that path issue. So back in Aurora, we want to go to our settings menu. So we need to press our start button. Once in there, we want to go to content and then across to uh, manage paths and add a path. So we want to make sure that change um, on the path is highlighted and select that with our A button. We want to set the path then, so it's on our hard drive one. And if we come down here, it's our homebrew folder that we want to add to our path. So we use our Y button to select that. We should see that path now going into that homebrew folder. On the depth side here, I'm just going to change that to three just to make sure that it actually picks up all the software inside that. And if we then come down here, that is um, part of our homebrew data. So let's just select homebrew in there. So we're going to go across to save. That should hopefully now have added that into our system. So if we go across to the scan now, that should hopefully then pick up any of that um, new software that we've downloaded. So it, you can see in the message there at the back, it is scanning for that. So that's done now. So if we now come out of here, we should find that we have our Rick Dangerous game across here somewhere in our R section. Let's have a look and see if we can find that. And there we have now our, our Rick Dangerous, um, which has come down as a homebrew app installed through our homebrew store. And if I just select that, that should then boot up that app and we can play that game. So back in the homebrew store, there are of course a few other of these categories that we can have a look at. Uh, emulators of course contains a number of emulators uh, and if you've looked at my video on how to install these you'll know that you end up having to go around a few different websites downloading files and installing them. So again all of these are installed just by a single click. Um, we then have a, a couple of dashboards, so if you want to change the overall look of how your hacked um, Xbox 360 looks, um, then you can use those. And then the other, um, really I guess that's where they've stuck everything else that they couldn't really fit into any of the others. Um, having said that, um, a few of these uh, titles in here um, do actually fit into some of the other categories. Um, but again, um, you, you'll find these, the range of apps and the range of categories, I guess will expand over the next weeks and months. So that's what's currently on the homebrew store. But the uh, really interesting part is where we start to go down the bottom here and we're able to then connect to other repositories. So the homebrew store developer, this um, person who goes by the username of Durf, um, they've been very clever in how they have constructed the software. So you can create your own re um, repositories of software, apps and resources. And again, there's instructions on this main page here of how you do that. So, so basically you create a data file which describes your repository and gives, of course, links out to where to get the software and files from. And then you can connect that up into the Homebrew app so that people can then browse and then simply click and download and install any, well, basically anything um, from, from games, from, from apps, from content directly onto their Xboxes, directly over their internet connection. So hopefully over the coming months, we're going to see a range of repositories being created for the Homebrew store. Uh, again, th those will hopefully then start to add more of the Homebrew apps onto the system, um, more resources and so on. Um, one good thing as well, as we've seen there, but in creating your repositories, all we're simply doing is allowing you to download a range of files over the internet and have those being installed onto your hard drive on your, on your hacked Xbox 360. So that of course does open up the idea of delivering actual um, Xbox 360 games directly from a repository. Now I don't know if somebody can um, broker some sort of licensing deal with the software companies for that, um, but that would then allow you to do that. If, if you've watched my video on, on how to install games onto your Xbox, um, you'll know that that just simply is a matter of copying across a range of files. And, and that is then of course, perfectly possible through the homebrew store. So 
be interesting to see how this whole system develops. Um, we'll keep an eye on that. And I say, if, if there are any major developments, I will notify you through my channel. So if you have enjoyed this video and if you like what I'm doing, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for to get make sure you get hold of any of those notifications and new videos as I release them. Um, of course, I do do a lot more in terms of modding, gaming and um, electronics projects. So keep an eye out for those. I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.